Okay, so we're going we gonna to move on to another uh, what the hell and uh, what the hell uh, question that we're going to ask. We're going to leave the rest of this segment over uh, to the Trayvon Martin story, uh, which, of course, we talked a little bit about last week. Uh, it just seems like these, this, this story just keeps growing and growing and growing week after week after week. Well, it's, it's, it's only been national for the last couple of weeks, but you just seem to get more and more information and. Uh, I guess the, the, I want to kind of think about it from a couple of different angles. The first thing I want to get in on is the fact that Geraldo Rivera came idiot. out idiot. this idiot. week and said that the fact that Trayvon uh, was wearing a hoodie contributed to the fact that he was shot and killed by Mr. Zimmerman, which I'm going to continue to refer to him as Mr. Zimmerman. Uh, I'm not going to be disrespectful. I know there's some listeners who don't feel that he deserves to be referred to that way. And I certainly understand that sentiment. But me, Marcus Jones, ain't no half step and will always be respectful to every single person that I refer that I reference. So that's why I'm calling him that. I'm going to start with Carlton Banks. What do you have to say about Geraldo Rivera and his comments about young Trayvon? Dude, if that's the case, you can go on any campus, not just black, not just white, any campus. See somebody in the middle of the night wearing a hoodie. I mean, for real, Gerardo? I mean, really? Weren't you punched in the nose enough to know that you shouldn't say something like that? I mean, come on, man. What the hell are you thinking? Yeah, it is. Big rule. When we talk about the difference physically, the physical differences between Trayvon Martin and Mr. Zimmerman, we're talking about a difference of basically 100 and depending on who you ask anywhere from 100 to 150 pounds depending mm-hmm. uh and you're a big guy i'm not you know we call you big rule so we're not breaking news by by saying that nah if you had a, a young fella who was about your height but outweighed you do you <laughs> outweigh them by 100 pounds do you think you would have a problem taking them physically just be honest be honest um no okay i'm, I'm gonna take this piece by piece now is it also well? Let me ask you. I'm not going to say is it also your pay. I'm not a lawyer, but do you <laughs> think that it's possible for someone that's a hundred pounds smaller than you, Big Rube, to not only jump up, punch you in the face to the point that I that 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 you get dropped to the ground, but they're now slamming your head to the ground where you can't regain your control and composure and physically overtake the situation honestly i just want you honest yeah opinion. it's possible it's, it's, possible. it's p- the reason why it's possible is because your nose is part of one of the big arteries in your body that's why when when you bust people's nose open blood just falls like down immediately it's attached to an artery and if you break somebody's nose i mean they're pretty much done for a minute okay. so theoretically if he hit him in his nose and he broke his nose, yes. Okay. It's possible. Okay. Is it probable? I mean, sucker punch is pos. you know. I I can only speculate because that, you know, if All you right. know what you're doing, you can do that. All right. Well, let me ask you the next question then. Let's say that the scenario that you just laid out, sucker punch, breaks your nose, drops you. Right? Yeah. Do you think that that, do you think the response of pulling out a 9 millimeter gun and shooting the person that just broke your nose is an, an appropriate response. Well, honestly, if I just got dropped and my nose was broken, I don't think I could function well enough to shoot a nine millimeter to the point where I would I would be able to hit effectively. All right, you didn't answer the question. The is question, a response? The question that I asked you was. If you just got your nose broke by a dude that you outweighed by 100 pounds, is it an appropriate response to pull out your gun and shoot them in the chest? I'm saying it is an appropriate response. However, I don't think that's possible. I mean, because basically you're in crazy pain. You're, you're talking about, you're trying to fix yourself up, much less pulling your gun out and shoot somebody in the chest. I mean, you ain't, he, obviously Mr. Zimmerman is not karate trained or anything like that so you're looking at a, a a pain situation where he would have to overcome all that pain to pull out his weapon and then function enough just to shoot i don't think that's possible 
Let me let me just give a quick shout out to this area code six one four. I just got a text saying that Russell Simmons blasted Geraldo about his comment. Now let me get into this aspect. You outweigh me, I outweigh you, indifferent. Because, you know, a good punch unlike anybody. The out. Yeah. Okay. The thing about it is this. Why did I get out my car? I've already been told not to follow the gentleman. Why did I take my gun? Do I have a license for this gun? Am I able to carry this gun? Did I even tell the man I had a gun? I mean, you should be able to announce, or you I believe you're supposed to announce the fact that you have a gun no. when you're supposed to get ready to do something. Yeah, I, not you know if you I have mean? a secure. If you have a, if you have a a license for it. Uh, uh, a concealed permit. So, a concealed permit. You don't have to announce anything. Okay. Well, here nor there. Why get out the car? Why not just wait for the police? All right. That, that was the whole thing. Wait for the police. Leave me alone and just wait for the police. We're here, on our way. All right. Here's my whole situation about it. One, he followed him. Shouldn't have followed him. Right. Two, follow him in a car. Yeah. Okay. That's even dumber. Three... You got your car. Apparently, you quote unquote didn't see him, and he snuck up behind you. Okay, if he stayed in your car, he probably wouldn't have messed you. He's probably just gonna hide and try to roll roll out. Now, when it's all said and done, if I got if I drop somebody, I'm running away. <laughs> First, I'm gonna run away for because simply, I already dropped this dude. I'm not engaged anymore. Second of all, I probably wouldn't have engaged him anyway. You know. By getting out of his car, he made himself a target. Right. You know, and then if I get out of the car with a gun, first of all, I don't care how tall you are or whatever, if I got a gun, I'm coming out with my gun in my hand. Right. You know, because basically, you're right, Trayvon's 6'2", whatever, you know, he's faster than me, he's younger than me, strength-wise is probably the same, but let's just be real. Why do I want to get into an altercation, a physical altercation with this kid when I have a gun? I, I think I think what we're missing here is the fact that, well, I don't know if I say missing it because Carl Banks just made the point. He was told to stand down. Yeah. He, he was told to stand right. down. He has and, and I think the point that I really, really, really want to make here, Zimmerman's acts were reprehensible. He should be arrested and he should be put in front of a jury of his peers where they decide what his fate is mm -hmm. my real issue more than anything is with the Sanford Police Department because clearly there were some issues with regards to how they handled this yes. you got a young man by the name of Mr. Zimmerman who's the son of an ex-judge yeah. I know a lot of people knew that but his dad is a judge he had ties to the I Sanford think his grandfather, Police Department it's his daddy, is his daddy? he okay. had ties to the Sanford Police Department he also called the police department 46 times. These people knew exactly who the hell George Sanford was, uh, jo George Zimmerman was. There was no question. 46 times in a year, mm -hmm. in a year and a half, they knew who he was. When they get to the scene and they find a man standing over a dead body, is it appropriate to just listen to the man who pulled the trigger because the man who had the trigger pull on him can't respond? Is it okay? To only use the stand your ground law, the guy said, yeah, he beat me up, so I shot him. And that's it. You don't take his clothes. You don't arrest him. You don't take DNA. You don't test him for alcohol Did and he drugs. even go downtown? He went down. He was questioned for several hours and released. But they didn't take his clothes. They didn't take DNA. They didn't check to swab his hands for gunpowder. They didn't. Anytime there's a shooting, they're supposed to check your blood for alcohol and drugs. They didn't do any of that. They tested Trayvon. They tested Trayvon. And the other thing that we didn't bring out last week when we talked about this, Trayvon laid in the morgue for a whole day or more, depending on who you listen to, before they even notified his family. Okay, okay they say that he didn't have any identification. Yeah, it was on a, a, gen, a John Doe. A John Doe, right. But the John Doe who's just on the phone with his girlfriend, you mean to tell me that cell phone wasn't close by? And he was near the house he was going to. So if you'd done a quick canvas of the neighborhood and said, hey, there's a young black male, unfortunately he's deceased, here's his photograph, does he look familiar? How long would that have taken? The Sanford Police Department completely 
completely butchered this. Real quick, big rule, final thoughts on this. Final thoughts on it? This is my thing. We should have learned from the OJ trial. When you go after things you can't quantify, you're going to lose. The whole and, I, and the way I say it is because the OJ trial, it wasn't about OJ. It was about a black man killing a white woman. That's what it was about. It wasn't about OJ. They couldn't prove he did it. Whatever, whether he did it or not, inconclusive. You nobody knows but OJ. You know, everybody say, "Well, OJ did." Nobody knows but OJ because nobody knows but OJ because they messed up the evidence. They made a race thing and they end up losing. This is what I say. This situation needs to go down for the facts. You had a neighborhood watch dude, regardless of color, killed a 17-year-old boy, because that's what he is. He's not even an adult yet. He killed a 17-year-old boy because he thought he was being attacked or whatever. That's it. I know people are going to hate me. But the more you make it a race issue, the less you're gonna get the the trial and the justice that you that we really want. Final thoughts, Carl. You know, I read a report that said Jeb Bush, the former governor of Florida, when he signed that, he didn't agree that that's how he defined or he interpreted that law. So when you got the former governor who agreed to that law, saying. That's not how I interpreted it. You got a problem. The guy who wrote the bill also said that he didn't uh, agree with how it was interpreted. He didn't agree. If anybody in this situation should have been looking at Stand Your Ground, it should have been Trayvon Martin. Exactly. He's the one who had the opportunity or should have had the opportunity to, uh, to stand his ground and defend himself. And just real quick, absolutely to me, and I don't know this big room and I disagree on a lot of things that we definitely disagree on this absolutely a race issue because i don't think any person white or black if they're being honest with themselves will agree that if trayvon martin had been a white person and george zimmerman had been a black person that the roles would have been completely different i think that the shooter in that case would have been incarcerated uh for the duration of how long it took to sort all of this out uh, the fact that George Zimmerman was a white person shooting a black person, hey, undervalued, marginalized, it is what it is. This is the America that we live in. And I'm sorry. Until you Don't be sorry. Well, I, I, I say I'm sorry because I disagree with them. And I don't want to be disrespectful to him or any of the listeners. But I do think this is absolutely a, a racial issue. Because I think if the roles were reversed and the things went different, we would see something quite different probably wouldn't have even made the national news because the shooter in that case would have been arrested and it would have been something that would have kept in house in Sanford but we're going to leave it there ain't no half stabbing Marcus yet we're going to take a break we come back the ransom and closes we'll be back in five minutes <laughs>